Hi, it's Paula from Pola Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, we'll be needing a few things. Um, I've taken out from my magic number box uh, some six and a half inch uh, squares. Uh, I also need some solid scrap, something that will contrast nicely with my uh, squares. And I cut them into three sizes. So one is one uh, and a quarter, one is one and a three quarters, and one is two and a half inches wide, those uh, solid ones. And uh, I used for that a, a solid fat quarter to cut them into strips and I did sew them all together and that will help with eliminating uh, waste when we'll be using it. So that's a part of the preparation. However, if you have some wonky scraps, wonky strings of the solid fabrics and you've got enough of, of those, use those because we will be using also uh, string scraps in this project. As you can see I've got quite a few. Uh, so I will use those. So, how we want to start is we will take our uh, squares and we will kind of a uh, little bit uneven them this uh, now. So what I want to do is in random places I want to cut out some of the pieces of the fabric. Uh, I want to make those kind of wonky uh, diamond shapes. So um, I've cut out all the corners first but then I can cut here another one just to make it uh, very irregular so that one I'm okay with and then I will just do the same thing with the other one I'm not measuring anything here is however you feel to trim it it will work well it's just we don't want to have it a square we want to have it a irregular shape Here you go so they are now ready to be um, used and what we will do we will use those strips which are one and a quarter and one and three quarters to start adding those uh, uh, strips on top of those uh, wonky shapes uh, the best way is because there's obviously few places now you can uh, sew one work at least at the two at the time because that will speed up the sewing and you can chain piece uh, those pieces and then before you take it to the iron board so you can kind of trim the, the the angles you can sew at least one two three maybe four pieces of that blue before you take it to the uh, iron first time round to kind of trim it so uh, that's why it's also good to work at more than one at a time so you can cut down the number of trips to the iron. Okay, so I will take my narrower piece first and I'm sewing with quarter inch allowance here. It doesn't have to be if you have something else set up on your machine it will work uh, fine as well. Until we will start piecing it with something else. The seam allowance is really not that important. I'll just grab a scissors and I'm just looking here where my uh, piece is finishing and I want to cut a little bit more than that uh, to make sure I've stitched it, stitched it to the end and then I can take my second piece and start like I said chain piecing here again I'm checking when my piece is finishing here and I will cut a little bit more Now that first piece is ready I can take it out and I can find the next side I can sew without uh, kind of needing trimming this one first. So next one will be here. I will use my wider piece this time. Again, I'll just cut this one out and I'll just go around all of those shapes until I've run out of the sides which can be sewn before I need to take it to the iron and trim them, trim them. So that's what I will do now. Okay, so I've sewn around that um, initial block all the sides that I could have sewn 
uh, without taking it to the iron and I will do it now so I can then take make it nice and flat and I will trim all of those sticking out pieces so we can add a remaining blue color to the remaining sides. So here is how they look after they've been uh, ironed. So I'll just go according to those lines here, according to that kind of block itself and I will trim it off. You can go deeper when you're trimming as well so you don't have to stick to this line. You can go and make you know another cut to make it a little bit even more angled here so you can kind of play with this shape here even more so you can see I'm not actually aligning here with this line I went a little bit deeper. Uh, the more wonky that shape will be the, f the, f the kind of more fun uh, shape at the end of the block you will achieve so um, don't be scared of doing that but what we want to achieve in this step is again those uh, edges here nice and straight so we can attach here at another piece of kind of that blue fabric until all around is covered with the blue fa blue fabric and we're ready for, for the next color. So again I will repeat now that process and I will use either one or other size of the uh, blue strip, doesn't matter which one I want to use. I will just start adding it again to cover all of those remaining empty spaces. So I will need to go again to the iron board now because I cannot sew in this one without kind of trimming this edge and I cannot sew this bit without trimming this edge. So I will take it to the iron board again, I will iron it out, trim all of those edges and where I'm still seeing the fabric I will add another strip of uh, blue color and I think I will have the same thing here. I need to trim those sides and I need to tr trim those sides and then my uh, center is going to be ready. So when it's done, this is what you will have. So you will have this center color all around kind of covered with the blue color. And as you can see here, I'm not following the lines exactly. Again here you can make another kind of cuts here to be a little more wonky. Uh, it's fine as far as you've got blue color around that initial color and then this block is going to be ready to kind of work on uh, in the next step which is you will take your scrub bucket with your strings so what we want to do is add three lots of colors around like we did with the blue one now I'm using scraps in my, in my uh, scrub bucket so I will I may not have enough of the same fabric to go around so I will just marry up the same color so like this one and this one and maybe this one and this one so all of those green scraps will be my first color so they don't have to be exactly the same fabrics it's just you want to keep it in the same color family uh, then I could have a lot I've got lots of browns so I've got this brown and maybe this brown and this brown that should be again enough to go around one time so I will go through my bucket and, and like I said I need three lots for each block that means for one block I need three colors which will be at least a little bit contrasting between themselves and it will be enough to cover all around that block so I will prepare myself those sets and I'll be working from those So now that I've prepared kind of few options for the colors, uh, I can carry on and start sewing all around my uh, shapes. Uh, I will just make sure that there's a little bit of contrast between color to color. So for example, I won't be putting uh, this next to the red, that's maybe not enough color, but this next to that 
black one will be fine. Uh, so just you want to add a little bit of colors between those uh, layers. So like mentioned we want three colors, three layers of colors, uh, that's including this blue one so we'll be adding just two colors on top of it. Choose the colors to be also contrasting with your middle just to have a little bit of more interest here. Uh, but the process is exactly the same like the one with the blue. So let me stitch that uh, those kind of colors now and I will take you to the next step. I finished adding the last kind of pieces of fabric here to make it go all around and um, I just wanted to remind you that as you're trimming those extra sticking out beads don't afraid to kind of add another angle somewhere as you go around in every cycle you can create a new shape and kind of make it you know not necessarily like here I should just go against this line and trim it here but actually I can go like this and trim it here it doesn't have to follow any lines whatsoever as far as it gives you the shape you like so I'll just quickly trim those two here again I can just come in here and create another angle here and I, I not necessarily want to have this piece that um, wide so I will trim it as well so you, you can literally make it whatever you want and however you want Here we go. So the next step is going to be cut it into four parts, uh, but we are not going to be making it very even either. So first I will cut more or less, I'm going with that center piece here, more or less in the middle. Doesn't obviously have to be exactly in the middle, it's all improvisation. And then when I'm going to be cutting on the other side, I definitely don't want to be in the middle, so just put it to the side a little bit more so um, though th they are not going to be halves they will be maybe you will have I don't know two thirds on this side and one third or on this side or, or whatever other kind of uh, scenario but you definitely don't want to look at like it's in the in the middle exactly I'm just using lines on my mat to set it off so that line here is matching the line on the mat and then I know I can come in here and cut it straight down but again it's not in the middle here you go the whole idea of that cutting not in the middle is that when we now swap those pieces around slightly you will have that uneven uh, middle section you can do it anyhow you like whatever you feel like doing in the middle so now each of those individual sections here I want to build up again with the blue fabric uh, to make it six and a half inch square. If you have a six and a half inch uh, ruler, just put it on more or less, just see how much you need to add. That's why I, I cut some of those pieces two and a half inch uh, wide because I just want to do it here very quickly. However, if I'm gonna add this piece here, I'm still sticking out here, I'm missing a bit. So I can use some of those uh, narrower pieces to kind of build it up. Seams in this block is a good thing, so don't worry that you don't have a wide enough piece to kind of finish it off to six and a half. You can add as many strips as needed uh, to build it up. And you will do it exactly the same with all of those pieces. Again, add it on the ruler, see how much you're missing. So here if I'm adding this piece here, my ruler is finishing here, so that will be enough piece here. I might need to add another strip at the top, that's fine as well. I will do that now and uh, when I've built enough, it's going to be good to in the last ironing before you start uh, cutting your six and a half inch pieces uh, to starch it as well just to keep that block in check and quite rigid and then I will trim it and that will be block finished. So each of those quarters will be six and a half inches and the big block is going to be twelve and a half inches.
Now with this one here you can see that some of those pieces are quite big already so for example this one here I'm only missing like I don't know quarter inch here to have a six and a half inches so I will I will just either trim it here a little bit more or when I'm going to come to squaring it up I will just move that uh, ruler not aligned with this corner of the center I'll just lift it, lift it up just to make sure that I don't have like a, a seam just at the corner there so you can kind of adjust your block uh, that way as well so let's have a look at this one I will have probably similar situation here this block came out quite big or this part of the block so I'm okay here I'm okay here it's a little bit where I'm gonna struggle here so I could literally just come in here now and just trim that edge here as well and then I know I can add the blue around so you can again still play with your blocks to make it what you need uh, this one I, I wouldn't have any space for the blue here at all so on, on this occasion uh, a part of trimming it off a little bit I will then when I come to squaring it up I will just maybe move the ruler a li little bit more up as well so again you will adjust as you go so when they are cut into those quarters, it's just going to be now quick um, chain piecing like we did before, uh, just to make sure we add those blows and we'll be able to square those blocks up. So when you're adding your strip of uh, pieces or of fabric, either with that starter of blue or perhaps uh, the color, uh, the narrower stripper will work, work better as you can see to not make it too big so you don't have to kind of worry about the shape at this point when you're cutting. There you go. Quarters, I've got all my quarters ready now to add the blue fabric onto. So before we carry on with the project let's just round up where you can find me and how you can support my work. First of all, please subscribe to my channel and watch uh, videos as I'm posting them without skipping the adverts, please. Please comment against the videos because that helps to push them out to wider audience and don't forget to share with your quilting friends. Join my network either on Facebook or Instagram, all the links how or where are in the description below. Where you see my posts either on Facebook or Instagram, please like, share and comment on them. If you like to add something extra, I've got now membership available through the YouTube. You can also use a super thanks on YouTube or buy me a virtual tea, coffee or lunch uh, using a form on my website. You can also support me by subscribing to my newsletter via my website. That will help me to notify you when I publish new videos or blog posts or maybe there are some items available to purchase on my website. However you decide to support this channel, thank you very much for being here and I hope you enjoy the content. So as you can see here I've been chain piecing uh, adding the, the blue uh, fabric on however I won't be going through all of that stack I will normally work with four five six pieces at the time and that's because that when it comes later when all of that blue is added and I want to square it up to six and a half inches I may find that some of those pieces sticking out here are quite big and also I will have a lot of maybe small angles where I will kind of just need a, a triangle to fill it up so um, when you're working with a batch at the time whatever you cut off you can then reuse in your next batch so that's just a little bit of a tip there so I will carry on adding the blue fabric I will then take it to the iron that I've got a big enough space and I will take you through the squaring up process Here are all of my blocks, now I've stitched uh, the blue color and I'm ready to squaring them up. Uh, so as you can see here there's quite a lot of seams here on the blue and I was using kind of scraps and leftovers. With this block the seams are your friends, the more seams it will look better. Um, there's another tutorial I was working with lots of seams and scraps and I will link it in the description below uh, if you want to watch that one as well just to give you even more 
uh, kind of help how you can go about those um, uh, kind of patching up from the scrap. So uh, here, as I've mentioned, six and a half inch ruler. I'm just going to square them up. You can play here a little bit as well, whether you want to more blue of that background color or you want to more of your center. Uh, either way will be fine. The block will be unique um, to that cut. Here you go, as you can see, again, I've got quite a lot of scraps here, so when I will be making more of those blocks, I will just reuse those pieces where I can, and that's where all of those seams are coming uh, from that process here as well. And they're just really adding the interest to that part of the block, so that doesn't stop or make it bad. Here we go. I should really change my... Um, blade in my <laughs> cutting tool. Okay, so that's one quarter of that block. So I will carry on with my squaring up until I've got all of them ready and I will pop them on the design board and we'll see what we can make out of those blocks. And here are the finished blocks and uh, some of the options we can put um, out of them. I did call this block a sharp block just because it reminds me kind of broken diamond in the middle so it's the shards coming out of it I really do like this block I think it's quite versatile um, because you can put them in uh, one bunch but you know what you've cut you put back together or you can have two different colors mix or even more blocks together mixed up as far as you're using the same uh, solid color in it it kind of will make those blocks uh, quite cohesive so you can mix and match them any how you like Please don't forget to pop on my website to have a look at my newest book. Uh, there's a whole website dedicated to that book with a description of what it is about and what you will learn from it and how it can help you in your scrappy journey. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and you give it a go. Uh, please let me know what you think about it in the comments uh, and let me know which layout you like the most. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Thank you for watching. I hope you will share this tutorial. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Happy sewing and see you next time.